welcome to the Temple review of uh, this week's game between the Louisville Cardinals and the Temple Owls. The Cards were victorious, 30 to 7 in this game. They wrapped up, racked up uh, 26 first downs, allowed 13, and, and tallied 525 yards to Temple's 255 yards. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater had a great day. He finished 25 of 35 for 348 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, really solid. Um, in this edition, uh, the, I'm only going to really cover the first half. Louisville only really played a first half. They they ended at halftime up 24 to zero. They got two field goals in the third and fourth quarters, and then actually allowed a, a, a blocked punt late in the fourth quarter in a in a really short field for a touchdown. Uh, we're not going to go over the second half at all um, for a lot of different reasons because this is a quick week. We're going to turn around quickly and move on to the Rutgers game. So we're going to cover the first half here, and let's get started. This play here is a big reason why the Cards were able to score their first touchdown. Here you see Ryan Hubble get loose, and Teddy Bridgewater finds him in the exact spot that he needs to be in. Teddy Bridgewater throws the ball right over the defender's head. Hubble gets behind a defender, and the safety is late coming over. It's a really nice running catch uh, for Ryan Hubble, and a great throw from Teddy Bridgewater. Recognize that Hubble has his man beat. They don't score on this play. Maybe a little bit more speed from Hubble. They do score, but they do get a touchdown here on the next play, uh, or actually two players later uh, from Gerald Christian. Uh, Christian goes in and acts like he's going to seal the edge on a block. He does not, and he releases, and it's just wide open for a touchdown right there, uh, you know, easily into the end zone. One thing I do want to look at here uh, coming when Bridgewater's coming to the sideline is Will Stein actually slapping Teddy's helmet and Teddy doesn't really like it very much uh, you know Stein don't hit Teddy Bridgewater in the helmet uh, you see you see it's a nice hard hearty snap slap to the head and Teddy's like what are you doing man it's going to be unlikely that we go a week without me complaining about kickoff coverage, so this will be my weekly contribution to that uh, weekly gripe. Uh, just fill the gaps, guys. You got everybody down there. Don't create a hole like that. Uh, but you know that that's just our weekly thing. Here, Preston Brown treats a running back like he's supposed to be treated. You love when Preston Brown plays football pissed off, and uh, on this play, he definitely looks like he has a problem with this running back going up his middle, and he holds him and pulls him backwards. And uh, you know, I just love it when Preston Brown plays football like this. Uh, it's a gang tackle, but Preston Brown makes the f the first contact. He gets a lot of help from Brandon Dunn and Keith Brown there, all the way to the ground. And I like that attitude with the big physical football setting the tone early against the Temple Owls. Here's Louisville giving up yardage uh, because of a simple soft play call. You know, here you see Temple throw to the wide side of the field. This ball is in for the air forever and Andrew Johnson comes in and makes a nice tackle but the coverage is too soft I just really think that a ball in the air that long should get knocked down to that side of the field and you know you make the offense pay for trying to make a throw like that here's another example Terrell Floyd gives up you know about eight yard play um, because of you know just really just a soft play call so I'd like to see that tighten up a little bit moving forward this is a big play that may cost the cards dearly going into uh, week seven against the Rucker Scarlet Knights. Here, Teddy Bridgewater makes an incredible throw, and Devontae Parker makes an incredible catch. Um, and Devontae Parker is slow to get up, and he never returns to the game. You see, that's a just a great throw and catch. I mean, it's just absolutely phenomenal plays that only really Devontae Parker can make for the Louisville Cardinals. And he lands uh, funny on his right shoulder. It looks like Temple guy that comes in over here on the, at the end kind of drives his right shoulder into the turf. And, uh, you know, it doesn't look like it could really be like a dislocated shoulder, but it could be like a shoulder separation or like a, um, or like a, maybe even a collarbone issue. He'll have an MRI today and we should find out the results of that on Monday um, Monday around noon at Charlie Strong's press conference, but uh, this is a this potentially could be a big injury for Louisville uh, moving forward to this short week uh, against Rutgers. This is an excellent team football run for Dominic Brown. He shows his patience, but this is all about the left side of the line and Sonoris Perry and Kai Dela Cruz on the outside. So if you want to take a really close look at this play, John Miller, Jamon Brown seal the edge. Dominic Brown is able to run around it. Sonoris Perry goes and contains the outside man. And then Jake Smith gets upfield. And Kai Dela Cruz does a good job on the outside too. Jake Smith gets upfield. 
cuts down that linebacker, and it allows a big hole for Dominic Brown to run through. That is great team football running game. Uh, that is an excellent run for the Louisville Cardinals just all the way around. Louisville does have to settle for a field goal here um, on third down. They do not convert on first and second. And then Michael Lee Harris just goes to the wrong area of the field. Teddy Bridgewater wants him at the pylon. Michael Lee Harris stays inside and kind of quits on the ball, cannot find it. And that would have been a touchdown. You know, if Michael Lee Harris could have found the football, I mean, I really feel like that was a really well-thrown football. It was in a place that was catchable for Michael Lee if he knows where he's going. Here's a Lozo moment for you. The left tackle for the Temple Owls uh, decides not to block Lorenzo Malden. Malden goes in. They're going to run play action, probably uh, a little rollout to the right side. And, uh, you know, just a suggestion of the Temple, maybe ought to block one of the best defensive ends in the league. Just a suggestion. Uh, the next play, uh, Louisville probably should have had a, a safety here. Nick Dawson comes in, gets a clean hit on the Temple quarterback. He you know, the flag comes out. There is a running back in the area that, you know, was really engaged in a block right before that. Uh, but, you know, the, it's such a subjective call that it's just one of those plays where uh, the the official on the road, a team that's overly matched, you know, generally is going to get the benefit of the doubt. And, you know, that should have been a safety in my opinion. But there's too much subjectivity in that particular play call, so we'll just deal with it. This is the final play of the first quarter. It's actually untimed because of penalty. Eli Rogers does his best Wes Welker impersonation, just catching the ball from the slot uh, behind the line of scrimmage and just taking it as far as he can. I really love that play for the University of Louisville. Great way to end the quarter, and the cards looked like they were on the roll. I really like this next throw from Teddy Bridgewater. It's third and 14, and he finds Kai De La Cruz right around the yardage marker for the first down. Uh, he stands in the pocket. Temple doesn't rush very much, and uh, the Cardinal offensive line does a great job of protecting him, and Teddy has time. When you give Teddy time, he's going to find an open receiver with this group, and he does that with Kai De La Cruz, and I just really like that third and long conversion for, uh, for the Cardinals here. You really can't pull a guard and – Forget to block somebody because when you do that, you get tackles for loss. Here you see B.J. DeBose, uh, the, le the right guard, just totally pulls and leaves an open running lane for B.J. DeBose to go in there and make the play. DeBose makes the play. Um, Rugger, or T Temple gets a tackle for loss, so uh, that's just that play. Now, on this play, we're talking about quarterback containment. We talk about when we're talking about rushing quarterbacks, the ability to not rush too deep. In this particular case, Louisville – goes too deep on their angles and leaves a hole for the Temple running back to run through. And it gives a you know pretty significant gain um, on this second nine. It makes a really manageable third down for the Owls. I love this play here from George Durant. He recognizes the little screen of the pass of the flat. He made, goes out there and makes a tackle in space against a running back. Just a really smart play. Beats the block. It's really a lazy block. And Durant recognizes it, goes up there and makes the play. The very next play I'm going to show you is actually, you know, it's two, second, and 27. And that's a that's a play where you should really be able to go and tee off on the quarterback. Louisville does not get pressure. And then you see Terrell Floyd and Hakeem Smith get burnt for a really, really deep ball. Now, in this particular play, Terrell Floyd is expecting Hakeem Smith to come over and help. And Hakeem Smith is really a no-man's land. He's looking at that short receiver long enough to make it so that he's just insignificant on the play and actually makes Terrell Floyd on his own. Hakeem Smith um, gets looked in with the quarterback's eyes, and that's all it takes for Temple to get a really, really long play. I want to show you two great plays inside the 10-yard line that the Cards made here on defense. The first here is Marcus Smith. Marcus Smith comes in from the outside off the ground. He's engaged with his man and stops the Temple running back for a one-yard gain. He does it. He disengages from his block he makes the tackle with his left arm and he just does a really really great job of bringing the ball carrier to the ground and stopping him in his tracks and letting his teammates help out the next play is a fantastic read from Roy Phylon the quarterback keeps it Roy Phylon is not fooled he sees that play and he goes in there and makes a critical third down stop here for the Cardinals Roy Phylon makes a fantastic play here 
on third down inside the 10-yard line. The next play is, of course, the field goal block. Um, Marcus Smith makes another great play here. Uh, the kick is low, but, um, you know, you take advantage of your opponent's mistakes. That's a lot. That's a big name of the game in football is taking advantage of your opponent's mistakes. I thought Calvin Pryor might have a chance to return this one, but we'll take that at the time, preserve the shutout for the Cardinals. And uh, it was a big, big play for the Cards to keep that, um, to keep that shutout alive at the time. Cards get a um, really fast score here in the NASCAR offense. Teddy Bridgewater surgical. First play that really mattered here was Sonoris Perry breaking off a huge run of first and 18. And then I really like the confident play call and throw here on this third and two. They go down the field to uh, Damian Copeland. It's kind of a tough um, catch and throw, but you know, they go and make the play. And I like that confidence from Sean Watson. I like the confidence from Teddy Bridgewater and Damian Copeland to go and make that play on third and two. Then Gerald Christian gets a, a play call over the middle. And then, you know, on second and six here, Teddy Bridgewater, you know, he finds uh, Eli Rogers there across the middle again. And then again at the very end of the play, Eli Rogers in the end zone touchdown. It's too easy of a possession. I think that's the way we wanted that every possession to go against Temple, but in the end, the Cards were able to win this game 30-7, to and uh, the, the icing on the cake at the end of the first half was this play on with Calvin Pryor. He, very, very clean, hard hit, clean football. Uh, Calvin says, shh, and I hope that we see a little bit more of this on Thursday night against Rutgers on ESPN, nationally televised game, big stage for this Cardinal football team at a very, very big time when everybody's criticizing the schedule. This is the top 40 Rutgers team coming in, and the Cards have a chance to make a statement on Thursday night. We'll see you there.